I know all hoarders aren't makers, but are all makers hoarders? These questions keep me up at night. Dale in again with another quick making project from Learn to Make, Make to Learn. If you're anything like me, you've got a cardboard box somewhere that has maybe two or three hundred of these things jammed into it, the core to toilet paper rolls. It's not a shared experience. Well, as a maker, I tend to tuck away materials that I think are gonna be crucial to a project down the road. And that's one reason why I have uh, two treadmill belts uh, tucked away in a closet somewhere. I know that rubber fabric material is just going to be crucial to a future project. Well, today I'm gonna help you get rid of some of these. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these lowly cardboard uh, toilet paper cores and we're going to turn those into candle molds. So let's get started. All right, for this project, what we're gonna need is our ubiquitous toilet paper tube, some sort of a chipboard or board material. What we don't wanna use is corrugated cardboard. And the reason for that is that we're going to punch a hole in the middle of this to allow our wick to pass through and the corrugations will just provide a great channel for all of the wax to flow through the hole and out the side. And that's gonna be a big mess. So no cardboard. With our chipboard, we just need pieces big enough to provide stability and uh, an area where we can get a good bead of hot glue on it. That means we also need a hot glue gun, some wicking material, cotton wick, uh, something to attach or tie off our wick on the top of the mold, and some wax, really. That's about it. Uh, most of this stuff should be just kicking around. This could be part of some packaging. Um, it doesn't need to be anything too fancy. If you wanted to get super fancy and go into mass production of your uh, cardboard candles, to toilet paper candles, what you could potentially do is make this out of acrylic, drill a hole in it, or even potentially, I've been thinking about, 3D printing a reusable base that you just set that down or wedge that down into and just use it over and over. However, that seems a little bit overkill for our purposes today. So what I've done is I've cut my uh, piece of cardboard into three inches square. It's not any critical number. It could be a little bigger, a little smaller. We just need enough space to apply the hot glue. I want to um, punch a hole in the middle. So I'm just gonna mark it really quickly to punch a hole. The hole needs to be big enough to easily thread the wick through without um, being so massive that you're trying to you know, plug some gigantic hole once you've wicked it. Uh, I have just a regular old hole punch. It just barely fits in the middle. It's not quite perfect, but nothing is really quite perfect in this particular project. Once I've got this punched and I'm ready to glue the tube on, all I'm gonna do is roughly visualize the center, kind of look down in it, get it sort of in the middle, and then start to glue it. So in this case, I want to just work a really good bead of hot glue around the toilet paper tube. Hot glue has a melting point of maybe 240 for low melt-ish to over 400 for some of the higher temp hot melt. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is our wax is actually going to be sitting at around 200-ish um, degrees. So we don't really want super ultra low melt hot glue. We don't want the, the heat of the wax melting the hot glue. I'll just work it around really quick, making sure to get it uh, up on the side of the tube and down onto the board, and then make sure that I'm really doing a good job of filling the gaps. I'll just keep going around. This hot glue gun's been cooking for a while, so it's really hot, um, maybe a little too hot. And then I'll just go around like that. Okay, at that point, we set it aside to cool. 
and what we have is our toilet paper tube uh, sealed to the base of our mold. Now, one thing to note, when we pour the wax, it's actually going to um, kind of you know soak through the cardboard. So you wanna make sure that your tubes don't have any splits or tears or holes in them, that it's not sort of delaminating on this, um, this spiral portion. If you're a little nervous about this failing or leaking, what you could do is just take some regular packing tape and work that around or some sort of tape, doesn't really need to be packing tape, but packing tape's plastic and that uh, feels like it would be something that would seal. Work it around and just reinforce the tube itself. I would do that actually before I glue it so that when you actually work the glue around, you're actually sealing the, the, the glue and the tape you know, underneath the glue. Okay, done. This has been allowed to cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my wick, I'm gonna find an end somewhere. So where is the end? There it is. And I'm going to work the wick through the hole in the bottom. You can see it's, you know, it's pretty close to the wick size. I'm not doing, I'm not gonna have to, you know, do a lot of sealing up of the bottom um, because there's just some, you know, big space left behind. Got my wick through, got a little stick here, tie a little knot in it, tie that off. This is like making any normal pillar candle. Bring that down, not like that. Okay, so we have it running through the middle. Okay, I'm just gonna take a piece of packing tape. I'm gonna cover it. Now, one of the things when you're doing this is you don't want, as you're applying the tape, you don't wanna create any channels that the wax can find its way through. Wax is, melted wax is basically like water. Um, it's gonna just flow wherever it wants to flow and can flow. So you wanna make sure that you're sealing these up really well or else it will just pour out all over the place and make a big mess. I'm gonna come out here to the end of that wick. I'm gonna seal that off. Make sure it's all nice and burnished down. I'm gonna put one more piece just sort of over it. You can kind of never overdo it here really. You just wanna make sure that when you pour, you're not going to end up with everything just flooding out. Center the wick in the middle of the thing, in the middle of our tube. And that's basically our mold. At this point, what I will do is I will pour the wax. And I've created a little aluminum foil tray in case things go wrong. It'll pour out and I can let it cool. One of the great things about wax is it's sort of infinitely reusable. So even if I have a catastrophic failure of the mold and it pours out into the tray, I can just let it cool, remelt it, and we're good to go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my wax. Uh, this is par just some regular paraffin. It's always, you know, you can use really anything. There are mold, uh, waxes that are specifically for uh, pouring pillars that have some additives in that make them a little bit harder so they don't um, melt and then kind of blow out on the sides. You can add stearine. There's some other materials, but this is just some regular paraffin. I'm gonna pour the wax and we're done. Now, as I've poured it, I can already see that the, the um, cardboard is starting, starting to darken and it will eventually look like this. And so again, if you're nervous about that, before you glue the cardboard tube to the base, wrap that maybe in some um, packing tape and see how that goes. That, I've never really actually had the tube itself completely fail. Normally what will happen 
is that I will have a leak somewhere else and that causes the problems. Okay, now that that's poured, I will just set this aside and let it cool. Depending on the wax, I might need to pour one or two more times because the wax will have a tendency to want to shrink as it's cooling and create um, a cavity down the middle along the wick. At this point, once it's cooled, we end up with something like this. At that point, we can just tear it apart and we can actually just rip off our mold altogether. So I'm going to find, this is sort of like um, opening up a, can, a package of um, biscuits. So we'll go around, start to get a good tear on it. We're gonna clean up this base anyway. So the base itself will just be, um, we'll need to shave that, trim that up because that's kind of the messiest part of the whole thing. We'll just peel this down. Keep working it down. Now the nice thing about this, or the kind of the interesting thing about this is, this does impart a bit of a, a texture to it that you wouldn't see with a metal mold or an acrylic mold. So it has that slight little spiral to it. Um, it also has um, a nice sort of matte texture, which, you know, it's just different. It's interesting, it works out. I'm gonna work off the base. and finish taking that off and there you go so um, this was actually not completely cooled it's still a little warm to the touch and so it was a little soft and i did get a little bit um, of a uh, cracking here but not too bad i mean these things are supposed to look a little on the bespoke side so there you have it um, very quick very easy at this point you can actually discard this you know i've thought that this might actually be because it's uh soaked with wax maybe a good fire starter or kindling i haven't really tried that but maybe that's something to do down the road but that's what we've got so a few words on safety always be careful when melting wax if you think about it wax is a fuel and if you take a fuel and you apply heat to it there's some room for things to go wrong there. Paraffin has a flash point of about 390 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take additives. What that means is that at or above those temperatures, it can combust all on its own. Now, 390 degrees in the scheme of temperatures really isn't all that hot, so you just need to be careful. Some other things to think about are you don't want to work on surfaces that you don't want to spill wax on. It's really hard to get out of things. So work on surfaces that you don't mind getting wax spilled on. That also includes your skin. Wax has a nasty tendency to want to stick to things. So a 250, 300 degree liquid that wants to stick to whatever it's spilled on, hitting your skin is a great way to end up with first and second degree burns. Not pleasant. Now, on that cheery note, the good news is we have found a way to get rid of some of, at least, your hoard of toilet paper tubes. Better yet, what we have done is we have created a viable excuse for your friends when they come over and find your box of cardboard toilet paper cores. Or even more important, if they catch you rummaging around in the bathroom trash, you have a way out. As always, please subscribe to my channel. I hope you found this interesting or gave you some ideas for some projects down the road. And thanks for watching.